The Alt-A tank, the third generation main metal tank, first designed and produced by Autocar. And in this video, I'll give insights on how the Alt-A MBT works, explain its history, and explore the tank's functions. The Alt-A MBT first started development by Autocar in 2007. It was named in the honor of Forhit and Altai, a cavalry commander in the War of Independence. And in 2012, the first working prototypes, the FDR, firing test ring, and the MTR, mobility test ring, were unveiled to the public. Between 2012 and 2014, the tank went through a facelift, as evidenced by the tower, and two more prototypes were made, the PV-1 and the PV-2. After rigorous testing, the tank became ready for serial production, and in 2018, a serial production contract between BMC and the SSM was signed for $3.4 billion and promised to produce 250 tanks until 2021, but due to the federal arms embargo put on Turkey by Germany, it has yet to happen, and in 2021, BMC unveiled its new facelift of the LTA as once again evidenced by the tower. Currently, BMC is planning to produce two Altays in May of 2023 and officially start serial production in 2025. Its combat weight is about 65 tons, which is equivalent to about 34 cars. It has a 1500 horsepower V12 diesel engine and has a top speed of 65 km per hour and the tank consumes about 4.5 liters per km traveled. The tank is 7.5 meters long and 3.4 meters wide. It has a 120 mm L55 smoothbore gun and has a crew of 4. It has a lot of complicated subsystems like active protection systems, laser warning systems and situational awareness systems. I'll elaborate more on those in a bit. This tank is designed as a more of a frontline tank so it can withstand most modern anti-armor solutions from the front. Now let's explore the specifics of the tank from the bottom to the top. I'll first touch from the tank tracks and the suspension system. The caterpillar tracks, or tank treads as they're sometimes called, allows the tank to traverse rough terrain like muddy, snowy or sandy terrain by dispersing the weight of the tank to a much greater surface area than a traditional wheel suspension setup. The tracks have 7 road wheels, and an idler wheel on the front and a sprocket on the back. The seven road wheels on the bottom use the torsion bar suspension system to ensure ride comfort. The only part powered by the engine is the sprocket. The other wheels move along freely with the tank treads. This means that the tank has excellent mobility on most terrain and can go through hilly terrain with relative ease. The tank treads are prone to break the most out of any of the tank's other components, but the tank carries tools on board that allow the crew to fix the treads. Now let's take a look at the hull. If you look at the front of the hull, we can see two headlights placed left and right, but these lights aren't used during combat operations since they can expose the tank's location during the dark. The headlights and the taillights in the back are used when transporting the vehicle. During night operations, the driver has night vision cameras he can use to see during the night, which are both located on the front and the back. If we take a look at the sides, we can see applique armors mounted on the sides. These specific armors are of the explosive reactive armor kind. ERA boxes have many explosive inside. When the munition makes contact with the armor, explosives in the ERA box explode and launch plates towards the munition, making the munitions effects less effective. Rear of the ERA boxes, there is a special kind of armor called sled armor or cage armor. These kinds of armor work by trapping the anti-tank munitions warhead to the space between the cages. Moving towards the back, the back side of the tank contains the 1500 horsepower engine that is used to power the tank. Because of embargoes against Turkey, the engine changed from a German MTU MT883 to a Korean engine called Doosan DV27K. The first production batch of these tanks will use the Korean engine, but in 2026, these engines will be replaced by the indigenous Batu engine developed by BMC Power. And at the back of the tank, apart from the engine, we can see a driver's rear camera, which the driver uses to see the rear of the tank. Around the driver's camera, there is an external luggage compartment that the crew can use to store things. Below the luggage compartment, we can see the cooling intake which the tank uses along with the ones on the top to cool the engine. Below the cooling intake, we can see the tow hook. It allows the tank to be rescued by another tank if it ever gets stuck. Now, looking at the top, we can see the turret ring which seals the hull and the tank together. And at the front of the tank, there is the driver's compartment. Looking in, we can see that the driver is in a laying position. The driver controls the tank using the pedals below his feet and by the steering wheel. The driver can be aware of his surroundings by using the periscopes in front of him, or he can use the screen and see from his front and rear cameras. He has two hull ammunition storages which are situated left and right of him. Now, let's take a look at the tower. 
Starting from the front, we can see the main gun of the tank, a 120mm L55 smoothbore gun. This gun allows the tank to have excellent firepower thanks to its long barrel. Looking at the corners, we can see three things. The corners contain the laser warning receiver systems, the 360 degree situational awareness cameras and the radars for the Accor active protection system. These three things are part of a package called Aselsan Arumjack, which can work with the other APS systems. LWS alerts the tank when it detects a laser pointed at the tank. It automatically turns the tower of the tank to the area the laser is coming from and it releases the smoke launchers to counter the lasers. The 360 degrees awareness cameras allows the gunner and the commander to be aware of their surroundings since most tanks are practically blind without these systems. Looking at the sides, we can see additional luggage compartments which the crew can use to store stuff. Looking just a bit to the left, we can see the more of the SLS and Ermjack system and more sledge armor to protect the sides. And at the top of the tower, we can see a lot of things. At the front, there is the gunner's periscope. It has two cameras, one for day view and one for thermal view. On the right of the gunner's periscope, there is the commander's periscope. The commander's periscope is panoramic, which means that the commander can turn the periscope 360 degrees to look at their surroundings. It also has two cameras for daytime view and thermal view. Behind the periscopes, we can see two launchers. These two launchers are part of the Accor active protection system. Each launcher carries two counter miniatures the tank can use to explode incoming threats to the tank. The radar situated at the corners of the tower detect the incoming threat, the launchers turn to where the threat is coming from, then the counter miniature is launched towards the threat. Right next to the launchers, there is the commander's couple on the left and the loader's couple on the right. These couplers also have periscopes with them so the crew can view their surroundings. And between the couplers, there is a remote controlled weapon system. It can be fitted with a variety of weapon systems. This particular one is an Aselsan Saab remote weapons station. It can be controlled by the gunner or the commander from the inside of the tank, so the crew doesn't have to risk their lives to shoot it. Below the RCWS and the loader's cupola, there is the blowout panel. In the case of an ammunition cook-off, these panels are rigged to blow, so any fire that could come out doesn't go towards the crew. Left and right of the tower, there are the smoke launchers. It could be used to obstruct vision towards the tank or in a laser point at the tank. Between the smoke launchers, there is a meteorological antenna and a jammer. Jammer can be used to block radio signals within radios to counter any improvised explosive devices or IEDs. A meteorological antenna can be used to predict weather within a certain radius of the tank. Behind these systems are the radio antennas, which I think is pretty self-explanatory. Now, let's take a look inside the tower. The commander and the gunner are situated on the left side and the loader is on the right side. The commander is on top of the gunner while the gunner is below the commander. The commander can view from the periscopes and the cameras using the screens in front of him and he can use his stick to take over the tower's controls and aim the gun. The gunner can also view from his periscopes and view his surroundings from the screens in front and he can also move the gun using the stick below the screen. The gunner is the one aiming the gun and the commander usually views the surroundings to tag enemies for the gunner to eliminate. The loader uh, loads the main gun, if you couldn't get that from the name. He has access to an ammo rack in the tower's bustle rack behind him, or he can use ammunition from the whole ammo structures which are situated left and right of the driver. And with that, I pretty much explained what the Alte has to showcase. Thanks to everybody for watching, this video will probably be the only video to be like this, and I'll maybe see you at a later date. See ya!